Hello everyone, I'm Mikey B, and welcome to a new series of videos that come to my channel about Europa Universalis 4. And today we're going to be playing as the Welsh, or Wales, and to get access to the Welsh faction, I downloaded a mod called Independent Wales, and through the Steam Workshop that was, and here we are, we've got the little Celtic nation of Wales. And if you're new to Europa Universalis 4, or you found this through my channel, or something like that, like you're completely new, uh, EU4 is a grand strategy game, uh, which means the micro and macro uh, management, uh, managing economies right down to units and upkeep and loads of numbers everywhere, basically. <laughs> and the map spans the entire globe, and along with that, comes the ability to play as any nation ever in history pretty much and it's pretty damn awesome and I could there's two ways you can um, play as Wales you can play as England load the English save play as England and release Wales as a vassal and then you can load the save again and play as Wales. But I decided to go from the very start, so it's 1444, as Wales. And yeah, so here we are, we've got England right next to us. And oh yeah, let me just start going through some of these details on here. The difficulty level, playing as uh, England is one of the recommended um, nations for beginners. But Wales, on the other hand, is one of the hardest nations to play as. And as a preemptive sort of planning uh, idea or whatever we want, whatever you want to call it, to survive long term, what we're going to have to do is start colonialism, um, because inevitably England will swallow up Scotland and. Uh, Wales, they'll take Glamorgan most likely first, and then Gwynedd, and yeah, that's what's going to happen, and I'm Welsh, if you didn't know, and yeah, that's why I wanted to play as Wales. Right, okay, there's so much stuff to go over in this game, this is my second campaign ever, so you'll have to forgive me if you're some sort of pro at this game, and I'm open to tips and sh that sort of stuff in the comments down below, and if I made mistakes, call me out on it if you think that I could have done something better let me know I'm always open to learning um, right so here we are we're gonna play as Gwyneth and then I'll talk you through some of the things and just as a, another disclaimer because we're a tiny nation I've got a feeling that a lot of this game will be fast forwarding uh, like in the fastest time setting and um, yeah saving up points and money right okay to explain okay right this is going to be quite uh, difficult to get into if you're new it's quite not difficult to get into it's a bit overwhelming when you first look at the interface like oh my god numbers and everything everywhere right so we're going to focus on um what would my first action be to check out the economy because we're a tiny two province nation so the economy for us is going to be extremely slow it's going to be hard to keep um, so what well, we're not at war with anyone at the minute so we're all good on that department right so you open this panel and we've got the government actually I'll just I'll just play it as I would normally and hopefully you can pick it up I'll explain it along the way and yeah okay so the economy panel um, the army maintenance upkeep Right, when this bar is all the way to the right hand side, it's using the most money, obviously it's costing the most, and this is our monthly balance. This is how much we're making each month, um, so that is a very tiny, tiny amount compared to what England's making. I'd imagine England is making 15 or 10 each, each month. Um, we'll not talk about the rest of these numbers yet, we'll pick them up as we go along. Um, right, so when this army maintenance is all the way to the right, it costs a ton to hold the troops. And what the army maintenance upkeep cost does, is it keeps their morale high. So, when I turn this down, over time, 
their morale will sink. See, it's gone. But it, we've also just saved a bunch of money. And the same goes for the fleet maintenance. They work exactly the same. So we save a bunch of money and we don't actually have to um, disband these units. Because this game works a little bit differently to Crusader Kings. In Crusader Kings, you build buildings that increase your levies. And then you press one button to raise the entire levy at once. In this, you literally have to train the regiments over a certain amount of time. It's usually 50 days. Um, right. I'll show you. Um, no, we'll, we'll just play it normally. And I'll... Sh yeah, we'll go along with that. Right. So what I'm going to do now is look at the government. We've got our king, Owain II of Gwynedd. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good we've got these are his stats as a leader in EU4 leaders aren't as important it's more nation based uh, so you're talking about managing like instead of having an individual character like in Crusader Kings your character is effectively your nation it's that's pretty much it no more portraits and all that stuff you just have his name there and his stats so these stats account for uh, these resources at the top so for example uh, administrative power diplomatic power and military power these you might as well treat like resources like in any other strategy game uh, you spend these on various things like technology for example national ideas this uses um, this uses the administrative power yeah and this uses diplomatic and military so as you can see there's a bar here that raises and as these points go up as you save them this bar will fill up and once it gets to the end you can click it and you spend all those points to advance your technology it's pretty much it, like that it's simple you use it like a, a resource um, and these little numbers from your king add to the monthly income of these resources so the base value, the base I get each month is uh, three, yeah we get three of each, so three administrative power, diplomatic power and military power. So at the end of every month, let's just fast forward, it's super duper quick, at the end of the month we will, see, we've got more points there and these add on to the base value so for example each month we're getting six points from there seven points on diplomatic and six points on military uh, more in diplomatic obviously because we've got more points there to increase this you can hire advisors but because we're a small nation doing something like this at this point in the game would put our economy into like dire straits we can't we just can't afford this sort of stuff right now Right, so let's just get on with playing the game, and as we discover new things, I'll talk them through. So this is kind of a let's play and kind of a tutorial at the same time. Uh, okay. Doubtful, like, cardinal sins. Doubtful hollow in the back of your mount. Echo the cautioning words of the priests and preachers. Is this what the sermon spoke of? The devil in a woman's body and the temptations of the flesh. Strange as the devil... Devils go, this one looks not like an angel either way. You have to bring this up to in your confession on Sunday. Need an air. Oh, right, okay. Let's forgive me, forgive me, Father, for I, for I have sinned. That gives us two papal influence. Right, I'm going to just blatantly admit right now, I'm not in entirely sure how the papacy works. I'll have to do more reading about that. Um... All I know is it's pretty much useless to us right now as a tiny nation. Um, it's really hard to do anything with it. I think that's how it works. You need to be quite a significant nation to have any significant effect on it. So, yeah. That's that. Okay. As I was saying, this is going to be quite a bit of waiting. Or not waiting, but fast forwarding through the time. So what is the first thing what we want to do? We want to save up until we can buy this National Ideas. Uh, this is going to cost 600 power basically. And we have 84 available. We'll be able to buy it in the 14, 1452 roughly at this rate. So as I was, I was just about to say, um, the 
advantage that we've got against England is that they have a really bad king. Um, is there a way to... There we are, King Henry VI of Lancaster. He is a terrible king and has no stats, which gives us a definitive edge against England at the time being. Uh, the thing is, is their economy is probably big enough that they can support advisors to make up that difference. So, yeah, we could be fine with that. Let's just have a look at our a bark, bark. Okay, we could secure trade. Right, what I'm going to do is send my merchants to start collecting. We've got two merchants and... Yeah, I'll talk you through this now as well. You push... You send a merchant to your nearest trade node, I'd say. You know, because, you know, this is the London trade node and you use this to collect a tiny bit more income. I'll show you on the economy. Where is it now? Trade, there we are. 49 each turn, 0 0.49 we're making each turn because of our trade power. Um, where is it now? Does it actually say trade power here? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I'm not entirely 100% about this either because this is my second game. But you basically send merchants to collect trade from your nearest trade node um, because you have the strongest influence to collect money from it. And any other merchant you have is you, you send them to another trade node that's pushing power towards your home trade node. So this example is in Bordeaux, so you'll push the power, uh, send power forward, which is um, sending money forward basically to this trade node, making this one more wealthy. This also helps England if they have large power, but um, yeah, that's pretty much my understanding of it at the minute. Uh, we've got 7% of the total trade power, so we make 0 0.4 each turn, or each month on that. Right, if that made any sense, um, what I'm going to do is start uh, fast forwarding here. And, hey, oh, what's happening here? An alliance offer from Tyrone. We do not want to start an alliance with Tyrone because they get dragged into wars with Scotland or some of their... Um, neighboring factions um, for the entirety of Ireland. There's going to be wars between these, what do you call them, clans, I guess. And, yeah, that'll happen. And we do not want to be dragged into any wars at the minute. We've already got England that's our rival. They absolutely hate us. Um, they're hostile towards us because they view... Uh, where is it now? They hostility due to their ambitions to conquer some or all of your provinces okay so there we are they hate our guts so what I'm gonna do to try and stop this from going tits up straight away is I'm gonna send a diplomat over to improve relations and what we're gonna do now is let's just double check we're gonna get a good amount of admin power let's just double check on what buildings we can construct nothing at the minute you basically build buildings like in any other RTS or strategy game or whatever you want to call it to improve your faction in some way. Um, so I'd say the best buildings to go for at the start are temples and uh, what, what else would it be? Marketplace and a constable. Or, yeah, constable. I thought it was constabulary to begin with, but it's not. Okay. Right. Alad Pritchard has been sent to London and he's improving relations with England. So let's fast forward and see what happens. This is our manpower, by the way, just going through these random stats. This is our money, obviously. Uh, we get plus 88 each turn. Our manpower is the maximum amount of soldiers we can have. Um, if these three soldiers died, which is, you know, there's three regiments, not three soldiers, died, uh, that's 3,000 men. So it would take 3,000 away from that to replenish these guys. So you can't just recruit new new uh, units if your regiments are destroyed, basically, because they try and, what do you call it, re resupply them and rebuild their ranks. So, yeah. Prestige. This affects a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's really complicated. It affects all sorts, you know, trade power, as you can see there. Moral of armies. If this goes below zero... Uh, you need to fix it straight away and legitimacy this is even worse like not even worse but even harder to come by but 
if you don't have it, if it becomes low, um, it's affects a bunch of negative things. You want to keep this as high as possible to keep it simple. Right. Um, let's fast forward it and see what happens. Oh, right. Oh, he's got really good stats as well. So we got a new heir to the throne, which means uh, we're not going to have any wars of succession or anything like that. And he's got a strong claim. So if our king dies, he'll be replaced by him when he comes of age. Um, diplomacy. Let's have a look. We've got a rival with France. Oh, wait, no. It's not. No possible rivals at the minute because we're too small. Um... Improving relations with Tyrone. I tell you what we need to do. We need to try and get a an alliance with Scotland, at least. F offer an alliance. So we've got Celtic nations. Because I need Scotland security, at least, if England attacks. Okay, so we have got the alliance. It's good, good. Right. What we could try and do is build a um, light ship fleet that will protect trade and that will increase our trade power which means we'll make more money from it uh, so what's 28% of our economy is coming from trade what else can we cut down on here see we got very very low income so it's going to take quite a while to get anywhere on this sort of money right Let's just fast forward and see where we go. Any more important pop-ups? Because if you're playing as England or France or Scotland even, you probably wouldn't fast forward all the way like this because you want to be careful with everything. But, um, yeah, let's... Yeah, it's just... Um, Wales takes quite a while to get the ball rolling, as it were. But, as a snowball effect, it, it picks up quite a bit. We've got quite a lot to do, so undiscovered land, the new world hasn't been discovered yet. The south of Africa hasn't been discovered. Uh, what we're going to need to do is research the... Uh, let's show you now. The exploration ideas. Originally when I played this, I went for the expansion ideas, but what we need more than anything is... Uh, exploration ideas so we can get a, a colonist and a quest for a new world which allows us to uh, hire explorers and conquistadors conquistadors are like generals that you attach to your army that then allows them to walk through the fog of war but in this it's called terra incognita and you can't actually like if I sent a ship down here it's not going to go through here this terra incognita it's basically a block yeah. Fog of War that blocks your movement as well. So, um, what we need is an explorer on a boat to cut through this to find the new world and a conquistador to lead troops to discover more territory inland. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a depthy game and if I haven't covered everything, obviously, I will and as we go on, you'll probably pick it up. Because it's... I originally started this game like because I bought it it looked awesome and I it basically sat in my Steam library doing nothing and I decided to just suddenly try it um, I thought the wall was too heavy but I figured it out and I love it it's really really satisfying to play but right here we are what's this now worship Virgin Mary blessed Virgin Mary Oh wait, yeah, because we're Catholic as well. That'll come into play in the future, our religion, so. Um, it's the Queen of Heaven and Mediator of Many Graces. There's no more perfect woman or, and her holy motherhood grants her seat at the right hand of God. Alright, what are these options? You get these sort of uh, role-playing options. Catholicism gain plus reformed. Okay. Ooh. Papal state's opinion changed by minus 20. I think... Um, 
let's go with the top one. I'm not entirely sure what reform desire affects. Maybe it could affect the result, uh, revolt risk. Uh, we'll have to find out. Let's have a look. Will we get any revolt risk? No. No reform desire at the minute. Alright, that's good. I just... You don't want to lose papal influence or um, their opinion of you. I'm not entirely sure how it affects you, but yeah, that's you definitely don't want to lose them. Because uh, I think that would give them the casus, not casus belli, but it would give you the, them the reason to excommunicate you. At least that's what logically you'd think about would happen. Right, so I'm going to split the part here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.